Hey everybody, how you doing? Coach PJ. Some of you might not know I'm a real person. <laughs> Some of the newer people. I am, I assure you. Uh, I wanted to make this video for you uh, for a couple reasons. Uh, so your coach is now doing the exact same thing you guys are doing. Um, I started an active fat loss phase. It'll be 12 weeks or so. <clears throat> uh, two weeks ago today, Thursday. Um, the idea is to get in the best shape of my adult life for my 43rd birthday on October 11th. Uh, so on July the 9th, I started this process. I hired my own coach, um, because I want to be congruent. Uh, if I didn't hire my own coach, uh, that would indicate that I don't think that the service that I offer is worthwhile. So I hired my own coach, <clears throat> which has been nice because I've never done this before. I've never handed over the reins uh, with my to my programming, training, and diet to somebody else. Uh, so it's been kind of nice to have somebody tell me what to do. Um, and I already see it, it's nice to do this because I get to see this whole thing from, from your guys' perspective. Um, the, the added accountability already is just makes a world of difference knowing that I have somebody that uh, I respect in the fitness industry who doesn't take any shit uh, and who I do not want to disappoint. It's a big deal. Accountability is a big, big deal. Not to mention the fact I have skin in the game monetar monetarily. That makes a big deal. Uh, th that's, that's why coaching works. Accountability and you have an investment in it in many different ways. So anyway, this is what I'm doing. Um, I know it, what I look like at my very, very leanest um, back in about 2013. Um, so the idea is I'm going to get back down to like, for a very small period of time, about 6% body fat. Um, there, That's in no way sustainable for me to maintain. Um, I, I want to maintain within a range, obviously, like I tell you guys, um, but I just want to do it just for the for the hell of it. Uh, you know, it's nice to challenge yourself uh, for periods of time. Um, so that's what I'm doing. So I'm doing the exact same thing you guys are doing. I'm, I'm in this with you literally, and I'll be sharing a lot of my own insights. And I think this will be good because it's going to make me a better coach. It's going to make me relate to you guys a lot better because I'm actually, I mean, I'm in the grind with you guys doing this. So, the, the, but the main point, besides all that, the main point of this video was to talk more about how fickle the scale is, scale weight fluctuations, etc. And I'm going to use myself as a case study in my first two weeks on this on this fat loss phase. Because um, I know a lot of you guys are really, you know, you freak out about the scale. And despite what I tell you about all the different factors that come into play that can influence scale weight and you know, why you should look at averages and not day to day, I think this will be beneficial because trust me, I had, even though I know better, I had some of the exact same type of thoughts and feelings very temporarily. Um, and I'm going to take you through this whole thing. Um, so, uh, if we look here, this is my happy scale logbook for the last two weeks. I'll be scrolling up on it here shortly. Um, I've been weighing in daily exact same conditions every morning before I eat or drink anything. After I use the restroom, I hop on the scale about the same time between five, five o'clock and six o'clock AM every day. I hop on the scale. All right. So I started this whole thing at 228 pounds. Um, and the goal is to get down. We'll see, but the goal is to get down somewhere in the range of like, probably like 203 to 208. Maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more. I'm hoping I can end up as lean as I want to be at a little bit heavier body weight. Because the last time I did this, I had to get down to like 200 pounds to do it. Um, hopefully, I've put on a few pounds of muscle in the last seven years, but we'll see. Um, so anyway, I started this whole thing at uh, 228. And this is a bit of an anomaly because this was coming off an extended 4th of July vacation uh, where I ate like a jackass. I chose to. I, I, I knew I was going to put on weight. That was my choice, no problem. Uh, so I, I was not really probably 228 here. This was uh, holding a lot of water, a lot of food in the GI tract still, coming off of uh, you know a, a hard uh, a, a hard 
few days with a vacation, hard in a good way, enjoyed myself. So I was probably, you know, more like probably like 225, probably something like that. So when you see this first weigh in, you're probably like, oh my God, you know, how did you lose four and a half pounds in a day? I didn't. Okay. It's not four and a half pounds of fat. It's, I shed a lot of water. And this first day, okay, my coach has me on, and this will change throughout. He put me on in a very aggressive, a very aggressive uh, deficit for the first two weeks that ended today. I'll get more into that. But at 228, he put me on like 1,900 calories. And, and, if, and as you guys know, because I talk to you about this a lot, 1,900 calories for a guy my size is nothing. Like it's under, it's like nine calories per pound of body weight. That's minuscule calories, right? Um, but that's where he put me. I'm going to do what he says. Um, and to note, have I been hungry? Yeah, here and there. But the protein intake I'm on is so high um, that the hunger is weird. It'll come, you know, intensely in the middle of the day, and then I'll have my next meal. And with the huge amount of protein, I'm like stuffed. And it's like 1,900 calories for the day. And I'm like, I don't, I really don't even want to finish my last meal. Um, and I've also kind of strategized how I break up my calories. Of the 1,900, 1,000 of them are, are used at night for dinner. So I do like four to 500, 11 a.m., four to 500 calories, two o'clock, and then like 1,000 um, for dinner. And that works really, really well for me. But sure, I'm hungry. That's the opportunity cost of wanting to do this. I'm not going to, you know, complain about it. That's, I chose to do this. That's the deal. When you want to lose fat, you're going to be hungry. Um, but the high protein content that I'm on, um, has definitely helped. And this is why I stress this to you guys over and over protein, 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 anti-hunger, satiation, thermogenic effect. You burn up a lot of the calories, you know, 20% of them digesting protein that helps with the deficit. Spares lean muscle tissue, all good stuff. So 1,900 calories, he has me on like 120 grams of carbohydrates, which is really low for a guy my size, really low. Um, so this first day was a combination of coming off vacation, um, holding a lot of water, like, you know, sweated like a pig that whole day. And I was on very low carb that first day and very low calories. So the, the, the end result is I get on the scale the next day and I'm 223.4. That's not true. Um, I was probably realistically more like 225, right? So anyway, but I've been doing this for two straight weeks. And when I say I am spot on with my tracking, which is what I always am on you guys about meticulous, honest, accurate tracking, no eyeballing, no assuming, no intuition. It's on a friggin' food scale. It is measured out in grams. Even condiments I put on my food, it's all measured out. Okay. So that's, that's the deal. When I tell you I have been 100% compliant, I've been 100% compliant. There's not even, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind I have been. Okay. And my, you know, my energy expenditure, my total daily energy expenditure per day has been roughly about 3,300 per day, and I'm eating 1,900 calories. That's on average. All right, so that, that's going to be important when I get into the, this log. Okay, so first day, whatever, I'm 223.4. I know why that was. Next day, back on the scale, boom, down another two pounds. Awesome. Next day, again, same calories, same, same macros, same everything. Um, get on, and I'm up almost a pound and a half. No big deal because I know I'm in a calorie deficit. I know I look on my Fitbit and even if those, even if the energy expenditure isn't completely accurate, it's probably within, it might be 10% off. Even if that's the case, I know I'm like, I'm in like a, a 1000 calorie deficit. So there's no way that I ate 5,000 extra calories the day before to put on a pound and a half of body fat. It, it doesn't, it can't happen, right? If, if I'm being honest with my tracking, there's no way. I was in a massive calorie deficit, so no big deal. Get on the scale the next day, up almost another pound again. Logical adult mindset, I did not eat 4,000 calories yesterday to put on that. 
or 3,500 or whatever it was, 3,000, sorry, about 3,000. I didn't eat another 3,000 calories the day before. There's no way I put on almost another, uh, you know, three quarters of a pound of body fat in a day. It's not possible. All right, logical adult mindset. All right. Uh, next day, boom, back down, 222.4. Um, next day, boom, down a pound, back to 221.2. That exceeds my prior low a few days before at 221.4. Next day, down again, 220.8. Next day, big drop, 219.2. And let me kind of uh, speed this up for you guys. Day after that, back up two tenths of a pound. Again, still same deficit, same calories, 1,900 to 2,000. Same carbs, about 100 to 120 grams, massive amounts of protein. Every, all the variables are the exact same, okay? But I'm up two tenths of a pound there. Next day, boom, up almost a half a pound on the scale. Doesn't bother me. The logical adult mindset. I know I'm in a deficit. I know I am. I can feel it. I can start, I'm starting to see it at this point, right? Like I feel tighter, you know, everything, there's no bloat, there's no nothing, but my scale is not, you know, responding how it theoretically should be, you know, well, I, you know, I'm in this deficit. I, I, I'm now in a 13,000 calorie deficit. How am I, you know, how am I up on the scale? It doesn't even cross my mind because I know how this works. I know how fickle and how weird the scale is, right? Okay. So on the 19th, that's uh, Sunday, I'm 219.8. Now here's where it gets even more interesting. Mind you, again, I'm 100% compliant for two weeks. Now watch this. Monday, this past Monday, get on the scale up two pounds. And I can tell you this weekend, that weekend right there, last weekend, massive amounts of energy expenditure, same calories, massive amounts of, of NEAT, 14,000 steps probably each one of those days. Get on the scale, I'm up two pounds. Again, no big deal. Logical adult mindset, I am in a calorie deficit. I can feel it. I'm, I'm hungry, not massively hungry, but hungry. I know I'm on low calories. I know I'm measuring, tracking precisely. No problem. All right. Tuesday comes back down slightly. Wednesday, drop back down to 220, pound and a half down on the scale. That's yesterday. Today, get on. I'm an even 219. Okay. And that that's my best way in. All right. You know, if I when I if I go back here, my prior best weigh in was on the seventeenth. I was two nineteen point two. Uh, a week later, I'm in even two nineteen. All right, and if I look at look at my average scale weights, if I go back to last Thursday, and this is what's important today, my my morning average is two nineteen eight. If I go back to the seventeenth. My average scale weight is 220.8. So I'm down, I'm down a full pound from last Thursday. That's why I tell you guys, look at the averages because this shit will drive you crazy. But you have to have the, the rational adult mindset that I am doing what's required and necessary. If you aren't, if you're blowing it, well, then you have an explanation as to why your scale weight's going way up. But if you're on point, logically and rationally, and you know, hey, look, I am sticking to this. I'm tracking accurately. I'm at, I'm not exceeding my calorie intake. I know I'm working out. I know I'm moving. I know I'm in a deficit. This, this stuff doesn't, doesn't matter, right? You have to look at the, look at the trends and the averages long-term. Okay. And frankly, uh, you know, I, I kind of went back and looked at it. I went back from when I started and I kind of looked at, because I know where my calories are and I, I multiplied, you know, 1950, that's my basic calorie intake, times 14. And then I looked at my daily energy expenditure, which is being tracked on my Fitbit. And I looked at the difference and it comes out about to where, you know, it's supposed to be. It's about, you know, if I, if I started realistically at 225, which I probably did, if I look at the overall calorie deficit between what I've taken in and what's gone out, it's about six pounds. I did the math. So anyway, I thought, you know, you might, 
you'd like to see this from a different perspective and have me go through this because I know it drives again it drives some of you guys bonkers to get on the scale and you're killing it. And you're like, oh shit, you know, I'm I'm up a half a pound. What what the hell is going on? This isn't working. Oh no. Calm down, take a deep breath. This is how the scale works. Okay. And and this whole time with these goofy fluctuations, I'm visibly already seeing results. I feel tighter every morning. Um, certain mornings I feel tighter than others, but I can already, I can feel it. You know what I mean? So I don't pay attention to it. I don't care. I'm after fat loss anyway. Yes, my weight's going to, going to have to come down, but it's not going to be linear and it's going to be bonkers all over the place. Again, scale weight fluctuates for most people, three to five pounds in a week. This is why the trends are so, so important. And this is why when you guys get on the scale for your bi-weekly, I tell you you're playing Russian roulette because you are. I mean, you're hoping you pick the right day and all this stuff is working out in your favor. The salt intake. And I've been seasoning my foods with like some serious rubs, really good rubs, but high, high sodium content, which I'm sure is playing a role in that. I'm training really hard. That's going to, a day after a hard workout, you're going to have inflammation. You're going to be holding on to water. It's going to affect your scale weight. This is why these averages are so, so incredibly important. And they tell the whole story along with obviously taking measurements, pictures, all that stuff. You can't just look at the scale because it's, it's, it's the most fickle one. It's the most fickle indicator. If you're looking at the scale, it's got to be a trend and the averages. So on your bi-weeklies, that's why I always encourage you guys. That's why there's listed week one average, week two average. Some of you don't fill that out. You should. You should start doing that because that's going to tell a better story. You might get on the scale on your bi-weekly and you're up two pounds from the last bi-weekly, but the average is down a pound and a half from the prior bi-weekly. That's really what I'm interested in seeing. And that's what you should be focused on. Okay, so I think that about wraps it up. Uh, probably more than you wanted to know, but I think this type of stuff is important to reinforce. So yes, I'm on a really low calorie diet for a guy my size. So when you guys tell me you're hungry, blah, 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 hey, deal with it. You know, I'm with you right now. I'm eating less per pound than a lot of you guys are right now. All right. And I, yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit hungry, but if you keep your protein high, and you strategize and you optimize your food volume, you're going to be hungry, but it's not like, you know, you're not going to be like shaking, starving, losing your hair, losing your menstrual cycle. If that's happening to you, you're not eating enough calories. But as I always tell people, look, if you're losing like a half a percent of your body weight per week, number one, that's really good progress. You know, 150 pound person loses three quarters of a pound per week. It's good progress. Extrapolate that out really good progress for over months. If you're losing that kind of weight, you ain't that hungry. Maybe a little tiny bit, but it's not like you're not getting enough nourishment. You're being nourished within the context of meeting a goal. That's it. Okay. So I'll be sharing more of this kind of stuff with you. I'm also going to do a video series next week on uh, how to track calories for weight loss. I've been on one hand, wanting to do that video series for you guys and for, I'm going to put it on my YouTube channel too. On one hand, I've been wanting to do it. And on the other hand, I'm like, is this really necessary? Because I think this is pretty self-explanatory. It's, it's come to my, it's come to my attention that this is not tracking calories is not self-explanatory to a lot of people. And a lot of people are fouling it up. So I'm going to take you through three days of how I track. I'm going to point out pitfalls that people get into with tracking. I'm going to show you exactly what I'm eating um, how I eat, explain why this is that. And I think that'll also be very, very helpful for you. So I'll leave it there. Thanks for uh, putting up with this, but know that I'm with you guys literally doing this with you now. So hopefully that'll, that'll give you a little bit more, uh, incentive and motivation to know that, you know, your coach who, you know, corrects you or whatever is now in the same boat as you are. So that's all I got. Thanks.